Hey there, my name is Mark, and today we're going to be customizing Doomy Max for some web development that we're doing in Web Dev One. Now, before we even get started, we are going to make sure that we have one of these prerequisites installed. So I'm going to head over to the terminal app. If you don't have it open already, you can go to your launch pad and search for terminal and open up the app. Now, I already have an instance of this open, so I'm just going to open up terminal. And the app that we're looking for or the program that we're looking for is called Tidy. So I'm going to go which Tidy and I can see that by default this is installed uh, in Mac OS but it's not the version that we want. We want Tidy HTML5 to be installed and since we have Homebrew installed this is a simple brew install Tidy-HTML5 and what this is going to do is give us the power to tidy up our HTML code. So it's just going to auto format it for us in a nice way that looks to be installed. So let's head back over into Emacs. Now one thing that I do want to keep on your radar screen today is in the upper left hand corner of your Emacs window or my Emacs window you're going to see the key combinations or the key chords that I'm using and the associated commands within Emacs. Now I am using a Swedish keyboard so you'll also see over in the right hand side here the keys that I'm going to be pressing. So for example I'm using the left command key of this relative to the space bar is my meta key and the right one for my control key. So if I'm over in Doom Emacs for example and I go meta X you will see here exactly what I said meta key X the command that it's executing execute extended command which are all the commands that I have available to me in Emacs and over up here on the right hand side if you missed it it was my left command X key. So that's uh, one thing to pay attention to today. Now before we can actually start editing this uh, HTML file where we start adding some tags to give some structure to our document we have a little bit of setting up to do and for that we are going to jump into our private configuration file so let's go ahead in here and the file that we're looking for is the enit.el now I could type in enit.el and press enter that's perfectly okay However, I can also use, this is on my right hand side, my command key, there it is, and I can command J down and command K up. And you can see up here uh, in the top left hand corner, this is the same as control J, control K. So I'm just gonna control K my way up to enit.el and open up that file and I'm somewhere within this file. So where am I? I'm just going to go straight up to the top. I'm going to give this a GG and now maybe we can make the text a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go space and then I'm going to go T for toggle and I want to toggle into big mode. So the text is a little bit easier to see and you can also see these key chords and the function that I'm actually calling. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I have web uh, mode installed. So I'm going to go forward slash, that is shift 7 on my Mac OS keyboard, which is Swedish by the way, and I'm going to type in web. And I press enter, and you can see here this is already enabled. I have this module ready to go. Yours will probably have a two semicolons, which comments out this line, so you want to make sure that you have both of those removed. Then you're going to go space, F for file, S for save. And that has saved our buffer. Now I am going to search for the next thing that we want to have installed. So I'm going to go forward slash and this is going to be multiple cursors. So I, I don't have to type in the whole thing. It's already found one of one occurrences of multip. So I'm going to press enter and I want to make sure that that is also enabled. Uh, just a bit further down, I think this one is enabled by default, but just check that snippets are available for you. And while we're here, let's give this a ZZ to center the screen, and then you'll see here. We want Dear Ed to have plus icons, just to make everything nice and beautiful. 
Uh, and that pretty much should do it. Uh, we're not doing any JavaScript today, but let's make sure that we have that ready to go. So I'm gonna go shift seven forward slash to search for JavaScript. And so you just wanna make sure that this uh, line here is uncommented so that the JavaScript module is loaded. And that's it. So space FS, save the buffer. Now we're going to want to reload Doom Emacs. So you can go space H and then R followed by another R. And this is going to reload Doom Emacs. Now it might be the case that you need to restart Doom Emacs for all of this to load properly. If that is the case, then you can give it a space followed by a Q for quit and then an uppercase R and that will restart Emacs and it will bring you back to your home screen. So that's where we are now. Now it's time to go ahead and start getting our project ready. So for this, we're going to get into DRED or DIRED, however you want to pronounce it. It means directory editor. So we're going to go space followed by F and you can see down here in the mini buffer, I'm going to press D next to find directory. So I'm going to press D. Now this is not the directory that I want to be in. I want to be in my home directory. So I'm just going to press backspace here and this is my home directory and we're going to navigate into our documents. There's two ways to do this. Again, I can use my right hand command key J down until I get to documents and then I can press the tab key into it. That's one way to do it. I could also just start typing documents. I could even start going human and it, that is the only directory or file or the only directory, sorry, that has human in it so I can then tab into it. Next, I wanna navigate into GitHub. So I'm just gonna go control J down. So notice up here, it's control J over on the right hand side. It's actually that right command key that I'm using. So I'm gonna tab into there. And now we wanna go into web dev one. So I'm gonna go web dev, I'm just gonna type in web tab in. And this is where we're gonna be working today. So this is where we're gonna be spending some time setting things up. So now we're actually going to create a, uh, a DRED buffer. So I'm gonna press the enter key and this is a buffer. And you can see this buffer contains uh, all the directories and files within our web dev directory. Now, right now I can navigate into this project temp directory just to take a peek what's in there. And there's two ways to do this. The first way, which is the most intuitive way to get in there is to press the enter key. And I enter into the directory as expected, but there's a consequence to this motion of pressing the enter key. I'm gonna press escape and then I'm gonna press space B for buffer, and then we're going to switch the buffer work uh, space here. And you can now see that there's actually two buffers. There is the one that we started in, which was web dev one, and then now we have another buffer for this project folder. So when I enter this directory, I created a new buffer. All right, so let's press escape and let's press enter one more time. And we're going to go into the assets directory. So how many buffers are we gonna have now? Let's go escape followed by B for buffer, space B for buffer, B again. And now you see that I have three buffers that I can work in. Now this is great if you want to be working in each one of these directories, uh, but maybe you don't want a new buffer for each directory that you create. So I'm gonna press escape. I am currently in the assets uh, directory, which is a buffer and I wanna close it. So I'm gonna go space, B for buffer, and then I'm gonna use D to delete it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and confirm that that's been deleted. I'm gonna go escape, space, B for buffer, B again, and now I can see that I have two of these. I'm now gonna navigate into my project temp and I want to kill this buffer. So I'm gonna go space, B for buffer. And here you can either use D for delete or K to kill the buffer. They both do the same thing. I'm just gonna press D here. And now you can see if I go escape space B followed by another B, there's only one buffer open and that is representative of this directory. So how do we navigate into a directory without creating a new buffer? Well, for that, we're gonna press A. And you can see now I'm in the project temp directory. In fact, if I go escape 
and go space, B for buffer, B again, you can still see that there's only one of these directories and one buffer. So this is I, uh, this is really nice if you're just navigating through your system. Again, let's do this. Let's navigate into assets. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna press A instead of enter because I don't wanna create a new buffer. And if I hit escape and then go space, B for buffer, B again, you can still see there's only one buffer open and I am currently in that buffer, which is the assets folder. So how do I get back then? Because before I could just move back through the buffers. Well, to move back, we're gonna use the minus sign. So to move up in my directory tree, I'm gonna press minus sign once, and now we are in that project temp. I'm gonna press minus sign one more time, and we are back in our web dev one folder. So now we wanna get started with our new project. So how do we create a directory? Well, that is the plus sign. So I'm gonna hit plus, and we are prompted to create a directory. I am going to call this one project recipe. And now if I press enter, it will create that directory for us. We can dive in there. How do we enter this directory without creating a new buffer? We're gonna press A. We are now in project recipe. Let's go ahead and create a, another folder here. I'm gonna press plus to create the folder. And now we're gonna create a folder called assets. So let's type in assets and press enter. And there is a new directory called assets. But I want yet another directory here. So I'm gonna press plus again, and I'm gonna call this directory recipes. And follow that up with an enter. And now I have two directories within my project recipe. Now we need an index file. So we're gonna create our first file here. So we're gonna go space followed by dot. And this will bring up the find file. Now we're gonna search for a file that doesn't exist. In fact, this is gonna be index.html. And if the file does not exist, Doom will create it. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And wow, it knew this was an HTML file. And so it created this beautiful template for us. Now we're not gonna work with this one uh, quite yet, but let's, let's make some adjustments here. Now you can see where my cursor is here. It's in the title tag here. It's almost ready to go. I'm gonna press escape and my cursor is just somewhere under this word untitled. And I wanna change this to my, maybe my recipes page. So let's go ahead and use C for change, I for in, and W for word. That is super cool. It deleted the word and it placed my cursor in insert mode, ready for typing action here. So let's put in my recipes page and then escape. Now I see up here, the language has not been identified in this. Uh, template. So I want to move up a couple lines here. So I'm just going to, let's just use some nice basic movements here. I'm going to go K, 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 K up. And then I'm going to use a little bit to the left here with an H. And now I'm going to press I for insert. And now we can go EN dash US. Escape, space, F for file, S for save. All right. Uh, I'm gonna make a couple more changes to this. I wanna remove these lines here, seven through 10. I don't want those there. So I'm going to move my cursor down to this line 10, which is relative to where I am. And to do this, I am going to go 10, J. How cool is that? I, I'm there uh, now on line 12. And I'm now going to go shift V and that's gonna place me into line visual mode. In fact, you can see down in the mini buffer here, I'm in visual line mode. And I'm just gonna go K, K, K a few times here. In fact, we can see up here it was three times. Now there's actually a faster way. If I'm here and I want to go shift V for visual line mode, and I wanna go up three lines, I can go three K. Oh, that was so nice and fast. Now I don't want these here, so I'm just gonna go D for delete. That's done. I'm gonna hit escape and then space, F for file, S for save. 
Let's move into the body. Now here we have a little bit of a prompt for a browser upgrade for those using Internet Explorer 8, don't want it here. So how do we delete these lines? We're gonna go Shift V for ver uh, visual line mode, and we're gonna wanna go down to this six here, so six lines down. So now I can go six, J, that was super easy, and then hit D for delete. I'm gonna do it one more time. This time we're gonna do it a bit slower. So I'm gonna go U to undo, and I'm gonna go up to the six. So I'm gonna go 6K, and now we're gonna do this the long way. So we're gonna go Shift V, I'm in visual line mode, and I'm just gonna J my way down and hit D for delete. That also works. And I'm gonna go Escape, and then Space, F for File, S for Save, and I think we've done enough with this index document for now. So I don't need this buffer lying around, so we're gonna go ahead and delete it. So we're gonna go escape, space, B for buffer, and D for delete. All right, we're now gonna navigate into our recipes directory here. How do we go into the directory without creating a new buffer? We're gonna press A. Now that we're in here, we're gonna create our recipe file. And to create a file, we saw earlier that we could go space, dot, and then we could type in the file name. You can also get here by going space, F for file and F for find file. It's the same thing. So both of these work and you'll find out which one works best for you. Now this one, we're gonna give a name. I'm gonna call this one recipe uh, dash sauce uh, dash hummus. And this is gonna be an HTML file, so dot ht HTML, and we're gonna press enter. And once again, we get this template, it's the same thing, so we're gonna fill it out just like we did before. So this time, I'm gonna go directly into insert mode, uh, and oh, I have this untitled, and I want to give this my own name. All right, so let's hit escape. And now that my cursor is at the start of the word, I can go C for change, and W for word, so I'm not in the word, I'm just gonna C for change, W for word, I'm put into insert mode, and I'm gonna call this the quick, <laughs> I'm gonna call this the quick uh, hummus sauce. Uh, so this, uh, or maybe we can call it a recipe, there we go. So we have a title, I wanna go change the language, how do I do that? I wanna go up four lines, so I'm gonna go four followed by K, and then we can just move over one character to the left and go into insert mode. And this is gonna be uh, en.us, that looks good. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and delete these lines here because we're not creating any Apple Touch icons and we don't have a favicon yet. So I'm gonna place my cursor here. I'm gonna press Shift V, get into that visual line mode and I'm gonna go J, 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 it's good enough for this, and then press D for delete, great. Again, we don't want this um, prompt for Internet Explorer 8, so I'm gonna go Shift V, and I'm gonna uh, go down J, 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 and delete. Now, uh, remember, you can do it faster if you want. I'm gonna hit Escape, and U for undo, so I'm gonna go up six lines, so 6K, and now shift V, visual line mode, and I'm gonna go down six lines, so six J, D for delete. Let's go ahead and hit escape, space, file, save. And now we're actually ready for what we really wanted to get after, which is taking this text here, moving it into the body of our HTML document and starting to give it some structure. So I'm just gonna come over here, I'm gonna go ahead and select this text. I'm gonna command and copy this. So command C, this is actually an iOS copy command. So that's now on the system clipboard. And I'm gonna come back over here into Emacs, go into insert mode, and I wanna be able to paste from the system clipboard. So to do this, I am going to press the actual control key on my keyboard, followed by a V. and you see up here, it was S, V, which was this uh, super key, which is the actual control key on my Mac OS keyboard. And I'm gonna press escape. And then my cursor is somewhere at the end here. So I'm just gonna go GG to bring me to the top. And there is absolutely no structure 
to this document. Uh, in fact, if we save this, it is just going to look like a mess. So let's go space, F for file, S for save. And we're going to come over here. And I want to open this now in my web browser. So there's a nice way to do this because I'm in Emacs. I'm going to go space and then I'm going to go O for open and I'm going to go B for browser. And this is what it looks like. It has no structure whatsoever and that's what we want to do now. Now to do this manually is a lot of work. So for example here I want to create an H1 heading so I would go I for insert mode, put in that H1 heading escape and then press uppercase A to the end of the line and then that would put me in insert mode and then I could close that tag. Well that was kind of nice, it finished the H1 tag for me but it was a lot of work. There's a much easier way to do this. So I'm going to press escape and U for undo one and U for undo again. Watch this move. I'm going to select the entire line. How do we do that? We're going to go shift V. And now we are going to press uppercase S for surround mode. So we're going to press uppercase S and you'll see down here in the mini buffer we have this S dash here. This is surround mode and we're going to now put in the tag that we want to surround this in. So I'm going to go, uh, let's open up that tag. It is an H1 and then I'm going to press, I'm going to press enter and it automatically surrounds that quick hummus recipe in an H1 tag. That's super awesome. I'm going to go space FS and move over into our browser here. And let's go ahead and refresh that. And now we got that H1 tag. It's looking much better. So again, let's move into Emacs. We're going to look at this line. Again, you can do it manually. Put in the tags. You go to insert mode, put in your P, and then uppercase A to the end and close the tag. It's a lot of work. Instead, I'm going to hit escape, I'm going to undo that, and I'm just going to select the entire line. So I'm going to go shift V, that is visual line mode, uppercase S, which is surround uh, for surround. What do I want to surround it with? Well, it's going to be a tag. So I'm going to open up that tag, and you see that's down in my mini buffer here, and then I'm going to place in that P. I don't even need to close the tag. I'm just going to go enter, and there it is. We're going to do it again. So let's go down to line four faster. So how do I go to this line four relative to where I am? I'm going to go 4J. And I see that I'm working a little bit towards the end of my buffer here. So I'm just going to give this a ZZ to center it for me. And now again, once again, I'm going to go shift V. That is the visual line mode highlights the entire line. We're going to go uppercase S. What do I want to do? I want to surround this line here with a tag. So I'm going to open up that tag with it, which is going to be a paragraph tag. Don't even need to finish it. Hit enter. Boom. Done. Space FS. Let's move over into the web browser and see how this is looking. Let's go ahead and refresh that. That's much better, isn't it? We've got two paragraphs here. All right. Now that we're back in Emacs, I'm going to go down four uh, lines relative to where I am. So that's going to be 4J. Now ingredients, this is going to be an H2 tag. We do the same thing again. We're going to go Shift V, highlight the entire line, and then we're going to go uppercase S to surround this in some HTML tags. Which tag are we going to do here? It's going to be an H2. Hit Enter. That's, it's just getting easier, isn't it? Uh, hitting Escape, Space FS. Going back into our browser here and we'll give this a nice little refresh and our pages has some structure to it. Going back into Emacs now. So this is a little bit different now. So we have a list of ingredients here that I want to place in an unordered list. There's no order to this list. So the first part of putting this in an unordered list is the unordered list tag. And so to do that, I'm going to start here at the first line and then I'm going to go shift V. So I'm in visual line mode again and I want to move down six lines relative where I, to where I am. So I'm going to go 6J, highlight all of those lines. What are we going to do? We're going to surround it. So we're going to go uh, open up that tag after uppercase S and which tag are we using here? This is going to be U for unordered, L for list. Great. Now each one of these lines is going to be a list element, so we need to put it in the li tag. Now you might be thinking, well you have this already selected, why don't you give this a, uh, 
uppercase S and then put in the tag, which is LI, it doesn't quite do what we want, does it? Because it's, it's surrounding the whole thing in that list tag. So let me undo that. Now you can keep going as we've done. You can do each one of these, whoops, uh, escape. You can do each one of these lines using visual line mode, uppercase S, and then putting in that list tag. But you can see this is repetitive. It's gonna be a lot of work, so there must be a better way. And there is. I'm gonna show you a way that just always works. And we're gonna highlight all the text again. So in visual line mode, shift V, and we're gonna go down six lines, so six J. And this time, we are going to press uppercase I. So uppercase I, this is evil insert mode, and you can see my cursor right now is right here on the first line. And we're going to manually type in that list tag. So we're going to type in LI, and it doesn't look like much has happened, but watch what happens when I press escape. Boom, that is so cool. It has created this, uh, this list opening tag for each line. It's really cool. Now, how do we get the other end? Well, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go Shift uh, V for visual line mode, and we're gonna go down how many lines? Six J, and it's at this point we're gonna press uppercase A. And you can see that that has placed my cursor at the end of the first line. And now we're gonna go ahead and close that tag. So we're gonna go, well, I don't even need to close it. It does it for me. And when I press escape, boom, done, super fast. I'm gonna hit escape, space, file, save. And let's go over into our web browser and refresh that. Oh, it's taking form, isn't it? All right, let's head back over into Emacs and finish things up. Uh, we're gonna go, I'm, now my cursor is here and I want my cursor down nine lines from where I am. So what am I gonna press? I'm gonna go nine J. And then to center the screen, I'm gonna give this a ZZ, perfect. Instructions, we also want this in an H2 tag. So we're gonna go Shift V, uppercase S to surround it. What are we surrounding it in? It is a pair of tags here, which is the H, uh, two tag, I believe we want, there it is. Space file save. And now we have another list. Uh, this one is going to be a ordered list. So I want these to be numbered. So we're gonna do the same thing. I've selected all of these lines and to uh, put in that ordered list tag, we're gonna go uppercase S to surround it. And what is the tag? Well, it is gonna be OL. Hit enter and we're ready to go with our ordered list. Now for each one of these, we are going to want a list tag. And remember how to do that. So if I'm here, uh, I want to go Shift V for visual line mode. I wanna go down five lines relative where I am, so I'm gonna go 5J. And I want my cursor to be placed right at the beginning here, so we're gonna go uppercase I for evil insert mode, and we're just gonna type in that tag, LI, hit escape, boom, done. One more time to close those tags. So we're gonna go shift V for visual line mode, and we wanna go down five lines from where I am. And now we wanna close those tags, so we're gonna go uppercase A, so my cursor is placed at the end of the line here, and we are gonna go ahead and close that tag. Watch, as soon as I go forward slash, it completes it, I hit escape, done. Escape, space, FS to save. Let's check it out here over in the web browser. Much better, isn't it? Let's move back over into Emacs and finish things off. Uh, I'm gonna go down to this line here, relative to where my cursor, it's eight lines down, so I'm gonna go 8J, give it a ZZ, and I want this to be in a paragraph. So once again, Shift V, visual line mode. Now I'm gonna press uppercase S to surround. What am I surrounding it in? It is in a paragraph tag, done. Space of S to save. Storage, we want that in an H2 tag. And you can see how we're practicing now. We're just going Shift V, visual line mode, uppercase S, for surround, and what tag do we want? H2, and we have it in there. I'm gonna go down four lines for J, and ZZ to center, Shift V for visual line mode, 
and then we're going to surround this in a paragraph tag. Again, 4J, Shift V, S for surround in our paragraph tag, escape, and done. So you can see with a little bit of practice, you can really become super efficient with this. And let's go space FS. I'm going to go back in over here to see the final result. And that is looking pretty super fantastic. So I'm going to leave it here for this video. We have done quite a bit here. I'm going to G, I'm going to GG myself up to the top of the, well, I better make sure I'm in Emacs here. I'm going to GG myself up to the top of the page. We're now done with this. So we're going to go space B for buffer D to delete. And we don't need this buffer anymore. Uh, in fact, let's just take a look what we've done. We've created this recipe sauce uh, HTML file. That's what you see over here. And then I'm going to press the minus sign to go up in my directory tree. We've created these two directories, assets and recipes. And we've also created this index.html file. I'm going to press minus sign. And we created all of this in our project recipe file. So. Hopefully that gets you started using Doomy Max for some very simple web development and getting started with our recipes website. My name is Mark. Thank you for watching.